Neil Armstrong once said, research is creating new knowledge. When you research, you are coming up with your own conclusion based on facts that you have created from the past. And by creating your own hypothesis, you are creating your own version of the truth. Therefore, through the power of research, you are creating your own knowledge, your personal knowledge. Research is important in the advancement of society. Today, we have developed upon research, and research is what propels humanity forward. It's fueled by curiosity. We get curious, ask questions, create hypotheses, and figure out conclusions to conclude our hypothesis to get an idea of what we really want to say. If early civilization hadn't been curious about the dark sky, we would have never known about what space was. Today, through research, we have created a civilized society, something to produce good information, something to produce something that we all need to learn about. For the past two years, I have been mentored by Dr. David Deemer, a professor from UCSC. As a result of our research work, I was able to write a co-authored paper on race mixarian and the effect of it on intimidators and the effect between hydrogen bonds. My experience writing the research paper was one of the most best experiences of my life. From the check-ins with the editors, to looking over the paper, to going over the conclusion, the introduction, the hypothesis, I was able to relive the experiment multiple times and it was truly a thrilling experience. Every experience has taught me what not to do. And my next science enrichment opportunities will teach me what I need to know for the future. It'll teach me things that I never thought I would need to know, and it'll reveal my future aspirations. This is what keys holds the key to my future and what I can possibly do and achieve in the future to help people. Every experience will teach me more about what I want to do. In the past, I have learned a lot about what um, has been incorrect, and in the future, I want to be able to tackle high school in an easier way. Post-pandemic, it was a little difficult as I came in with, as a sophomore with a freshman mindset. But being mentored by Dr. Deemer, it gave me a research mindset. I was able to tackle high school in an easier way because research gave me that perspective of unstructured thinking. Today, in a world of information overload, the internet created larger data points, which means we have a larger amount of information at our stake. The traditional education system made us learn based on experiments in controlled environments. And in the new information system and the new learnings that we're getting, Generation Z is going through information overload. And because of this, we need research to structure our thinking and we need it to guide us forward and learn new items. In a traditional setting, we have very limited thinking, very limited research, and we're not able to take this information overload. And that is why a fundamental shift is needed in the way that we think. And this is why scientists are so important to our society. While STEM is just as important, I believe that in today's progressive world of advancing technology, it's highly crucial and highly important for individuals to explore interests beyond that and be introduced to research at an early age in order to develop their interests and develop their passions. I was fortunate enough to be born in an immigrant entrepreneur household in the midst of Silicon Valley. This gave me an introduction to the importance of STEM and math and science and research at a very young, at a very early age. And for many, many years, scientists have been the core of innovation, and they've been able to see the world 50 years ahead of time. The current focus on STEM makes us think upon the glass pane for the next two to three years and not train our brains after thinking about the innovation that will help humankind for generations to come to an extent that for the next few generations that come and the next few generations that learn for us, it helps us highlight upon the value of research and what it holds at a younger, early age and really experiencing what you love doing. As per the California Department of Education, at the age of eight, the curiosity and the want to explore and learn more things through curiosity grows. At the age of 11 through 14, they've learned the information 
and they have finally been able to retain some of that information. However, as you get older and older, it gets more difficult to absorb and retain that information. And for that reason, it's better to get started at an early age. I was first introduced to research at a lab experiment at the age of 14, where I was invited to look around a lab through a connection that my dad had. That one experience changed my entire perspective on the research field. I was able to write and recently publish a paper that represented more than just my understanding on the topic. Rather, it exemplified my want and to learn and my want to explore more within the fields of biology. It showed me how important it was to be exposed to something at a younger age to make sure that I'm really able to have time to spend on it. Research taught me to review the literature, collect data, make meaning of the data, and create a final research product that has gone um, through many and many years to come. It plays an important role in discovering new treatments and making sure that we are using existing treatments in the best possible ways. Through research, we are able to explore into a world of deep meaning and we are able to explore lots more. Today, research is a taboo topic. People have a preconceived notion that it's only for the highly learned, for everyone with a PhD and anyone from the best schools. A couple of months ago, I watched this movie called The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. In this movie, there was a 13-year-old boy named William who against all odds educated himself by going to a small library in his poor neighborhood. Using his limited resources, he was able to bridge the gap between the lack of resources and an issue of famine in the village. He didn't let the fact that he got kicked out of school due to financial issues affect him. He didn't let the fact that he didn't have enough money. Rather, he persevered through with a research mindset and he fought through to figure out and solve the problem of famine in his village. Keeping the perseverance and motivation of William, I want to make sure that I want to be able to prove to the world that with the right research mindset and with the willingness to learn, we can do anything. Today, there's so much information available to us. You can collect information and analyze it to make a better choice out of it. People tend to have a consumer mindset where they consume information but don't know what to do with that information. We want to change that mindset. We want to make it so you have a research mindset and you're able to think beyond the fields of research. It helps you change your mindset and helps you change your thinking philosophy. Traditional things teach you practical use of knowledge, while research gives us an innovative mindset. Post-pandemic, the world was different and there were so many new norms on a daily basis. Every aspect of society was different and the most affected aspect were the students, as they lost many years in studies, personally speaking. And due to this, we believe that research attitude is what will help redefine the normal. I can see a vast difference between me now and me a couple years ago. Earlier, my attitude and approach was, let's see what I've been taught and just use that, versus now my approach is, Let's find out what we don't already know and use that and delve deeper into that. For a project at my school, out of 500 students, I was selected along with two other members of my class. I was fortunate enough to be selected for this project and all the students that were being selected came from the same background, came from the same activity, had the same extracurriculars. But it was a question floating in our minds. Why did we get chosen? What was different about us? But when we asked the teacher, the reply he gave us was that you guys were able to think deeper. You were able to think in a hypothetical level rather than the reality and simply what we just see. He appreciated the way we talked about the topic by looking over it. He appreciated how we were able to think in a practical way and him and his past experiences allowed him to see deeper than what was just being shown. We were told that research usually does not end the study goes on deep and deep. There may be instances where you will take the time to figure out what you've expected, but ultimately you will be getting an outcome, an outcome that may potentially be different than what you predicted, and you have to be okay with that. 
One thing you will always observe when you are doing research are the questions that will arise one after the other constantly going on and on and on. And these questions eventually lead to new ideas, to new thoughts, ideas, revisions, and improvements. And all these in turn will be very helpful to the research process. Research will help us build a strong and positive mindset. In a world that is so uncertain, having a habit of thinking based on hypothesis that we're creating is going to be the new redefining normal. Earlier, research was privileged for the PhDs and very few people did it thinking that, oh, I'm not able to do it, it's only for the highly learned. But by introducing it at a yet earlier age, we will be able to help that literal thinking process and further develop it. Recently, during my vacation to Florida, I had the opportunity to visit the Kennedy Space Center. It was truly a thrilling experience. During my time there, I was able to get this whole new perspective on research, science, and data collection. And it was all truly amazing. It led me to categorize research into three main aspects, curiosity, innovation, and practicality. The constant questions from the astronauts covering the six W's, the curiosity, the toying around with the different parts and creating something sustainable, innovation, and disregarding the thoughts of this is good enough and rather thinking beyond it and thinking to yourself, what more can I do, the practicality. In an age where misinformation and fake news spreads like wildflower, it is crucial that we learn to think critically and distinguish between trustworthiness and not so trustworthy information. And having an understanding of how research works will help us better allow us to understand what we can trust and what we can't and looking at the traditional headlines and be able to make a better understanding of what we're reading. Building and flexing that critical thinking muscle is what allows us from all levels of our academic journey and allow us to read deeper into it and be able to expose during that research. We all utilize scientific thinking as we go about our daily lives, as we peer out the window to figure out what we're gonna wear, or when we're just cooking simple, making ingredients, mixing them together to make our food. It's all an attempt you know, to understand what we're truly doing. And it's all that idea of research mindset researching with different items, thinking, why aren't my tomato plants growing right now? Researching, figuring it out, and implementing the solution that you get to your daily life. Research is in all of our lives. In the book, The Art of Scientific Investigation by W.I.B. Brewridge, she wrote, the most important instrument in research must always be the mind of a man. The use of scientific thinking in research is what helps us make sense of the world. Learning skills to support that research thinking is very important in terms of the guidelines of research and it helps us with the generation develop. As we get older and further progress into our careers and daily lives, using scientific thinking truly becomes an art. When you're encountered with a problem, knowing which skills to utilize and the manner in which you need to utilize your skills and work through a process in logical fashion are essential to growth in understanding. With all these thoughts and ideas in mind, we must constantly keep asking ourselves, keep thinking, keep asking questions, asking why, why is this like that, and pushing the bounds to learn more about everything and anything. We must maintain scientific thinking so we can all pass information to on, on, all our oncoming generations and figure out more about what we need and what we can do to make the world a better place and increase our knowledge all through the power of research.